Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we will be talking about some common inventor misconceptions, and namely the importance of what versus why. For inventions, the intended purpose of the invention is not always what is most important. In order to obtain a patent, in many cases, the detail of the what of an invention, what it is, is more important than why we would use the invention. And if you're slightly confused, don't worry. We are now going to present an example that should hopefully clarify things. So we are going to go through a hypothetical invention scenario, and we'll be looking at claims. I just want to emphasize that these are not claims from a real patent application, but strictly intended for our contrived learning example. So here is our invention. We invented this plier-style toenail clipper. And so now let's write our independent, which means broadest or most general, claim to cover our invention. We have a set of curved cutting surfaces, right here shown in the red circle, elongated handles coupled to the cutting surfaces. These are the handles. And we have a spring-loaded element right here, which assists us in the clipping action during use. So we file our patent application, and after some time, typically 12 to 24 months, we get what's called an office action, correspondence from the patent office that contains a rejection. And in our example, the patent office cited a wire cutter reference against our invention. So let's compare our claim for our invention to the wire cutter described in the reference found by the patent office. Curved cutting surfaces, check. Elongated handles, check. Spring-loaded element between the handles, check. It matches up pretty well. So for that reason, the patent office issues a rejection. When I deal with inventors in this situation, they sometimes get upset and say something like, that is ridiculous. The cited reference is intended for cutting wires. My tool is intended for cutting toenails. It's a totally different use case. The reality is the wire cutter structure is similar to what is recited in our claim. The fact that the inventors of the wire cutter device intended to use it to cut wires rather than cut toenails does not matter for the rejection criteria in these situations. So what can be done in situations such as this? An effective way to overcome the rejection is often to look for structural differences between your invention and the cited references and amend the claims to include these features. While in this example it does make the claims more narrow than we originally had them, it is necessary sometimes to narrow the claims in order to distinct, distinguish or differentiate the current invention from the prior art cited, which in this example was the wire cutter. So let's look and see what structural differences we have. For one, we have this latch that can be used to secure the clippers in a compressed position with the handles close together. The wire cutter does not have that. But more interesting is this dual pivot design. As you can see here where the two screws are, there are actually two pivot points in this mechanism. And the wire cutter device on the right does not have that. So let's take a look at how we might amend the claim to distinguish our invention from the wire clipper. So here is our original claim up top on the right. And below is how we might amend the claim. Remember, we need to focus on the what. What is difference? Not differences in why we would use it. The fact that our invention is for clipping nails and the other device is intended for cutting wires doesn't help much in overcoming this type of rejection. So let's look at the structural differences. Here we show the handles joined at a first pivot point and the cutting surfaces joined at a second pivot point. As for the latch, that could be added in a dependent claim, but for this tool, the dual pivot points seem like a more interesting and meaningful feature to include in the independent claim. Now, one more thing to point out is that this example assumes that we had an adequate des description of how the device operates with the two pivot points in the original application. There is a rule that you can't add new subject matter to an application once it is filed. We are allowed to amend claims, but only to the point that those claims are supported 
by what we said in the original application as filed. If our application did not mention the pivot points at all, it would be difficult to amend the claims to recite that feature. The takeaway here is, describe all the features of your invention in sufficient detail so claims can be amended as needed in the future. And it is impossible to know what the patent office is going to find, so one can never be 100% sure how claims are going to be amended in the future. The best anyone can do is include sufficient detail in the applications when filing them so that the claims can be amended in the future if needed to get beyond rejections based on cited prior art. So in summary, why we are using something or the intended purpose of a device doesn't really matter. If a wire cutting device is similar to our toenail cutter, the fact that the other device was designed to cut wires doesn't really make it any different than our toenail clipper and doesn't help in getting us beyond the rejections. As we saw in our example, focusing on structural differences can be an effective way to get over these types of rejections. So hopefully you found this video helpful and interesting. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.